Hey everyone, it's Sunday, so we're back with another edition of Storytime. Um, I have two different guests with me today, although they're both frogs. They just happen to be two very, very different types of frogs. Um, we're going to be reading this amazing book called Fabulous Frogs by Martin Jenkins. So I thought I would try to show you a couple of the cool ones we have here. So the first one I have is a froglet, so I can't take them out quite yet. But this is a Leucomalus. This is also known as the bumblebee dart frog. As you can see, he's still got his tail, although every time I move the cup, he tends to move a little bit. Now, he'll be absorbing this tail up over the next week or so. And when that happens, he'll be a full-fledged frog. And he'll only be about that big, although when he's adult, he'll grow to be about that big. So just like all other frogs, it starts out as an egg, and that egg becomes a tadpole. And then as that tadpole develops legs, it then only has its tail left and then it absorbs its tail up and becomes a frog. Now, at that point, he won't be aquatic anymore. We won't want to keep him in the water. He'll want to move to land because dart frogs actually aren't very great swimmers. Uh, they don't have um, webbed feet like a lot of frogs do. They have toe pads, so they're more meant for climbing. So Luca Malls are a really, really cool frog. They're very communal. Most dart frogs live in uh, groups that we'd call armies. I think army is a very appropriate name for dart frogs because a whole group of them could kill a whole lot of things. So that's a Leucomalus that's still developing. And then my other one is one of my absolute favorite frogs. This one is a Vietnamese mossy frog, aptly named because he looks like a giant clump of moss. Now, when he's more uh, acclimated to temperature right now, he's you know not in his tank, so he's a little weary of what's going on. Uh, but normally he'd be a few different shades of green and brown and black. But as you can see, he's just gonna blend in like a clump of moss. Now where he comes from in Vietnam, he likes to live on the sides of waterfalls. And those waterfalls, uh, being that there's always water there and it's like a jungle-like habitat, there's gonna be a lot of moss growing. So this is his natural defense mechanism, is to literally just look like a clump of moss. So you can imagine like when he's actually flared up a little bit with his colors, you wouldn't notice him sitting on a side of rock. His other defense mechanism is he'll curl into a ball and just kind of play dead. Look at how dramatic that is. Even has the hand over the face. This is their other way of deterring predators if the predator happens to swipe them off a rock or a tree. But then you flip them right back over and voila, there we go. Oh, you're still being dramatic, why don't we Get your hand off your face, and you're just gonna be shy. You're okay. You're okay, buddy. I'm so cute. Vietnamese mossy frogs are one of my absolute favorite frogs. So, with that being said, I'm gonna put him back in here so he doesn't get too stressed out. Because as you know, we don't like to keep amphibians out on our hands or anything like that, because we don't want them to dry out. But they'll both be right here as we read Fabulous Frogs by Martin Jenkins. All right. This frog is huge for a frog. It's a Goliath frog and it lives in Western Africa. It's the biggest frog in the world. Sometimes it eats other frogs. These frogs are tiny. The, this is the smallest kind of frog in the world, or at least the smallest that anybody knows about, and it lives in Papua New Guinea. And this one has a very strange nose. It's called Darwin's frog and it lives in South America. No one really knows why it has a pointy nose. Oops, this frog can jump really far, really quickly. It's a striped rocket frog from Australia. It can jump 16 feet in one go. Very handy for escaping from enemies in a hurry. And these ones make an awful lot of noise. Frogs call to let other frogs know they are there. These are all male frogs. Female frogs are generally much quieter. The big one in the middle is a bullfrog. This one is called a flying frog, although it can't really fly. It lives in trees and forests in Southeast Asia. It spreads out the skin between its toes to help it float in the air when it jumps from tree to tree. And this one is called the hairy frog, although it doesn't have any real hair. The hairy frog lives in Western Africa. The thing looks 
The things that look like hairs are little strips of skin. They probably help the frog breathe when it's underwater. I think these frogs are all very beautiful. I couldn't tell you which one is the most beautiful, but I can tell you that each one could kill a horse, though only if the horse was silly enough to try to eat it. A horse wouldn't eat a frog on purpose, but plenty of other animals might. South American poison arrow frogs have deadly poison in their skin to help protect them. Their bright colors are a way of saying, keep away. And there's our Luca Mollus friend right there. These frogs make a nest of foam for their eggs. They're African gray tree frogs. Their nests hang in branches over ponds or streams. When the eggs in the nest hatch, the tadpoles wriggle out and drop into the water below. below. <laughs> and the one with the very strange nose looks after its babies and its throat. The male Darwin's frog snaps up the eggs just before they hatch and keeps the tadpoles in a special pouch in his throat. You'd think he'd want to swallow them all the way down by accident, but he never seems to. This frog never leaves the water. It's an African clawed frog. It spends its whole life living in a stream or pond. Not many frogs can do that. And this frog can live buried in the ground for years and years, waiting for the rain. It's an Australian water holding frog and it lives in the desert. It makes a little room for itself where it stays cool and damp. When it rains and the ground gets wet, the frog digs its way out. All these frogs are wonderful, but my favorite frog of all is the medium-sized greeny brown one that sits on a lily pad in my backyard pond. The end. And here's some more really cool frogs. Now my favorite frog right now, that's technically a toad, is the Panamanian golden frog. So if you've got time, what I would like you to do is go to projectgoldenfrog.org where you can learn all about the Panamanian golden frog, which is the national symbol of Panama. This entire month I've been raising money for this frog and have a fundraiser on Facebook for it. And you can also donate money through projectgoldenfrog.org. But the Panamanian golden frog is technically a toad and it's been extinct in the wild for almost 15 years. The cool people down at EVAC, the Alvaje Amphibian Conservation Center in Alvaje de Anton, uh, Panama, in the Cocle province, uh, are constantly working to try to get this frog back out to the wild. So if you visit projectgoldenfrog.org, you can also help the, these frogs get back out. $50 actually houses and feeds a frog for an entire year. So by making donations, you're actually directly helping these frogs, technically toads, out. So do that. In the meantime, enjoy these other awesome frogs that I have for you, and we'll see you guys next time.